let's uh, try to deepen and reinforce our understanding of the LaSalle invariant set principle and the use of Lyapunov functions to prove um, asymptotic stability by considering another example. So this time we're going to investigate um, this sort of mass spring damper system where we have this truck that's free to slide from side to side here and it's connected to the wall by a spring and a damper. And in particular we're going to look at what happens when we put a non-linear spring uh, in here. So we can go through and write down the equations of motion in the normal way. We have our acceleration, we have our damping term, and this is our nonlinear spring term. So our spring constant is k1 plus q squared multiplied by q. So we've got a nonlinear uh, spring constant, and this is just equal to zero. So this is the system that we're going to study. Um, and as always, the first thing that we do is we put it into our standard form. So as always we have d by dt and x1 and x2. Once again it's a two-dimensional system and this is going to be equal to x2 and here we have minus c over n x2 minus k over m x1 plus x1 Hopefully the structure in these equations is beginning to look quite familiar here. Uh, so just to be absolutely clear, our state x um, is equal to uh, q and q dot. So as always we include q and its derivative because we've got a q dot dot here. So this is our system and we would like to prove stability of the origin um, using all of this Lyapunov, LaSalle type tools. So we're interested in interested in stability of x on the equilibrium point x star is equal to zero zero. Uh, it's best not to think about precisely what that would mean in terms of this picture too carefully. This is sort of saying if the length q is zero, so the, the truck would be pushed right up against the wall, um, in which case this wouldn't be a very good model because there's a wall in the way. Um, but uh, we can maybe imagine that everything's already been pushed into our relative coordinates relative to some point further away from the wall or something like that. But here we have our problem. Uh, we would like to prove stability of um, this equilibrium point. So, uh, well, the first thing we need to do is to find a domain and a Lyapunov function. And we're going to go for global results this time. So we're just going to say that our domain is equal to R2. So this is any, uh, this is just saying we're not going to restrict the values that x1 and x2 uh, can take on. We want to prove stability no matter what, uh, no matter what they are or what region of the state space we look at. And for our Lyapunov function, once again, uh, we're going to just appeal to our energy um, intuition, and we're going to say our Lyapunov function p of x uh, is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Um, so the kinetic energy is easy, that's a half m x2 squared. What's the, uh, yeah, so x2 is q dot, so this is just the velocity of the, the truck x2. So this is normal kinetic energy. But what's a sort of a sensible term for potential energy? Um, so we sort of remember for linear springs that the potential energy is a half um, k q squared. Um, but we've got a nonlinear spring this time. Well, we can still look at the work done by the spring, which will be the integral from zero to x one of the force on the spring multiplied by the displacement. So this is just the equation for work done. This is not a mechanics course, so you don't need to know anything like this. It's just, um, maybe it's uh, good to have a little bit more motivation. And so what is this equal to, or what's the force in the spring? Well, this is just K, and then here we have, we're using our dummy variable, S, but 
So our spring is q and q cubed, so this is just our spring force integrated with respect to s from 0 to x1. And so what do we get? We get a half m x2 squared. And then we just have to do this integral. It's uh, pretty easy. And we just get um, k there, and then we get a half s squared plus 1 fourth s to the 4, evaluated um, between 0 and x1. And so this is just equal to a half m x2 squared plus a half k x1 squared plus a quarter k x1 to the 4. And so this is our usual um, potential energy uh, in a linear spring, and here we've got this bonus term coming from our nonlinearity. This is our Lyapunov function. Let's just apply our Lyapunov stability results. So uh, the first thing we have to check is v of x star equal to 0. Well, this is our Lyapunov function. We put x1 is equal to 0, x2 is equal to 0. This thing is equal to 0. Check. Two, the next thing we need is that v of x is bigger than 0 uh, for all x in our region omega, except um, x is equal to x star. So if we put any value of x1 that's not 0 and x2 not 0, this thing is always positive. We've got squares or powers of 4. These functions are always positive. So this is always true, except when we put x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 0, which is our equilibrium point. Great. We're going for global asymptotic stability. This was actually labeled as 0.5, I think, uh, when we uh, gave all the definitions there. And for that, we required that v tends to infinity as the length of x. Uh, so x1 squared plus x2 squared tends to infinity. And just means if we put in extremely large values of x, is this thing going off to infinity? Well, yes, because we've got an x1 squared and x2 squared and x1 to the 4. All of these things go off to infinity as we make them very large. So good. All that remains is to get global asymptotic stability, we need v dot is less than zero. Remember, point three was just for stability, and that was less than or equal to. So this is our final point left for global asymptotic stability. Let's just work out what v dot is and uh, see what we get. So v dot is equal to the gradient of v dot producted with f of x. And so what do we get? So the gradient of v is dv by dx1, dv by dx2. So what is dv by dx1? Well, we only have, well, no, we have two terms that depend on x1. Um, so here we get k x1 plus k x1 cubed. And dv by dx2, well, we actually do only have one that depends on x2. And here we get m x2. Look how nicely all the powers and things cancel out when we set things up properly. And um, now we need to put in our expression for x. And here we have x2. Here we have minus c over m x2 minus k over m x1 plus x1 cubed. We multiply out this dot product. What are we going to get? Maybe you're already starting to see what's going to happen. But we get here we have k x1 plus x1 cubed x2. And for this one, we have minus this term here, mx2 multiplied by this. This is k x1 plus x1 cubed times x2. So that's just going to cancel with that. 
and then we also get minus and we get c x2 squared. So this whole thing, v dot, was equal to minus c x2 squared. This is a bit spooky. This is kind of exactly what happened when we studied our last mechanical system. We ran through this whole argument and we were left with a minus with a damping term that only depended on x2. And this is not a coincidence. Uh, this is always going to happen. And here we see it happening even when we start putting nonlinearities into the springs. Um, and so we have exactly the same problem as before. V dot is strictly less than zero as long as x2 is not equal to zero. But if x2 is equal to zero, then it's only less than or equal to zero. So it fails this. So we have to go to LaSalle. So LaSalle. So to apply LaSalle, we had to do two things. We had to find this set that we called E, which was the set of points for which V dot is equal to zero, and then find the largest invariant set of that, which we called M. And an invariant set was a set uh, which, if you start anywhere in that set and you just let the system uh, run, you'll stay within that set. So let's start by finding E. So E is the set of points in X such that V dot is equal to zero, which in this case is the set um, of points uh, yeah, X such that X2 is equal to zero. There's actually a couple of tiny subtleties um, with the way we're applying um, LaSalle. I encourage you to look into the lecture notes to really get deeply into the details if you're interested in uh, in that. Uh, we're just going to sort of run, uh, run and ignore any sort of technicalities and just assume that they'll be looked after. Um, but uh, it's worth bearing in mind that the, um, maybe fooling you very slightly at this stage, but um, this method is certainly will certainly always work. Um, so we have this set E, which is the set of points for which um, V dot is equal to zero. And then um, we need to find M. So M is the largest invariant uh, subset of E. So this is the largest invariant subset of E, where if we start in E, we'll always stay in E. And just like four, we're hoping that M is just going to be the equilibrium point because then we'll be able to prove uh, asymptotic stability. So um, M is the largest invariant subset of E. And this was always with respect to the dynamics. So with respect to um, x dot is equal to f of x. So how do we proceed? Well, we look at our invariant set, oh, no, sorry, we look at our set E and we make some conclusions based on our dynamics about what um, m must be. And it's going to follow exactly the same pattern as last time, actually. Since x2 is equal to 0, x1 dot is equal to 0, and also x2 dot is equal to zero. x1 dot is equal to zero because x2 is zero and we get it from this equation. x2 dot is equal to zero because otherwise x2 would be changing. And if x2 is changing, it will leave the set E. And so it won't be in this smallest invariant, this largest invariant subset M. So we know x1 dot is zero, so we know x1 is a constant. And we know x2 dot is equal to zero. We substitute in here. And we find out that this tells us that x2 dot is equal to 0, which is equal to this term here, but x2 is 0, and then minus uh, k over m x1 plus x1 cubed. And once again, we see that this implies that x1 is equal to 0, so the set m is the point 0, 0, and so by LaSalle we converge to m, but m is our equilibrium point, so we've proven um, 
asymptotic stability and because we did everything on the entire domain because we had this property here in our Lyapunov function b we've in fact proved global asymptotic stability.